In the last video, we talked about how messaging services can be used to distribute information. Now we're going to talk about how websites and mobile apps can be used in the same sort of way. Firstly, a website is a collection of related pages which are stored under one name. Now, I define this because understandably people associate websites with the internet because many websites are internet sites. Some people might think that every website is an internet site, but actually there are some websites which are not hosted, which are not stored on the internet, as we'll talk about. But many websites are. So if we have got a normal website on the internet, we can, if we are a business, put information on our website, right? Like updates and other information. This is the OCR website for this course. There is different um, you know, past papers and specifications and so on. So lots of information being presented on their internet site. And these websites are public facing, right? Anyone can view this, even if you're not the target audience for OCR, you can still view the website and view the information. And because they are public facing, what's good in terms of you presenting information is they can be accessed from anywhere. And by anywhere, I mean, you know, your physical location, right? You could be in India or Argentina or anywhere, and you can view this available website, unless there is some content limitation somewhere. But obviously the caveat, the um, however point is um, that you need to have an internet connection required, right? If you haven't got access to the internet, you can't view this internet website. Another downside, which is sort of inevitable with having a public facing site is that you can't easily target information at specific people, right? OCR could package this information into an email and target it to teachers or students or whoever, but on a website, they can't, right? Anyone can view it. It's not directed to anyone in particular. Let's now discuss this bullet point a little bit more. So I said many websites are internet sites, but that means obviously not all websites are internet sites. So what are those other websites? So first of all, the internet is, as I may have said earlier, a worldwide network. So a network is some way we can share information, you know, the cables, the computers, the Wi-Fi routers, which enable us to share information. And the internet spans the entire globe which is why I can be in India or Argentina and share the same information. But organizations will also likely have either instead of access to the internet or as well as access to the internet, their own internal networks. So like a home network or a network inside an office. And these networks are called intranets. So inter as a prefix means between and intra as a prefix means inside. So inside the internal networks here are called intranets. Really the purpose of a network is to share information. So of course, an intranet being a type of network can also be used to share information. So you can send information between computers, but of course, because it is an internal network, this information can only be sent between computers inside the organization. And on the internet, like on the internet, we can also host websites, hosting meaning storing. So we can have our own internal websites on our intranets. So many websites are on the internet, but not all. Some can be on intranets, and these are called internal websites. So it's hard to show examples of these because you have to be accessing the internet and you can't do it from outside. This is a screen grab of some company. And usually, honestly, the internet websites are quite boring. They often talk about financial results and things like, you know, what to do if you have an issue, if you want to book time off work, if you have an issue with your IT, who should you contact? Quite boring stuff. There's a message from a CEO over here usually information specific to the company because it is they are good because they're not public facing right the public can't access this it's only inside of the organization so you can keep any private information internally and in terms of a business's functionality having this internal website is a good thing to do because it can enable you to put loads of relevant information in one place like things like IT support and how to book time off work they're all relevant information to an employee of your company putting it on one site is really useful but because they are kept internal clearly there is a very limited audience you can't share it widely beyond your organization and also having to set up an internet requires more infrastructure more hardware like routers and so on and also people to look after the network and keep it running someone's going to actually build your internal website maybe you've got an internal one alongside your internet one and there are two websites then you've got to maintain and look after which will cost money on either an internal or internet site one way you can share information in a sort of different way is with a written blog 
And these are like articles which can be used to share updates and news and stories about your company. So this is one from Twitter where some employees are writing articles and various things they're interested in and trying to work on. And it can be quite a nice informal way of updating people. A blog is mostly text or pretty much always text, but you can also have vlogs. A video blog is what vlog is a, an amalgamation of, where instead of text is a video with usually some audio as well, some commentary instead of just a written article. So like a, you see loads on YouTube in particular, this is one where a pilot is vlogging his journey. It's a slightly more, I guess, engaging way of doing it than said a written blog like that. So um, usually what's different about a blog than just a general web page is usually they're written by one person or small groups of people and usually by name. Sometimes, you know, a website won't credit an author, but a blog usually will. And this tends to make their content much more personal. And it being personal can be an advantage because this may engage more directly with their target audience. People like to know that it's coming from a human, not just a faceless organization. And related to this, I suppose, the information from blogs and vlogs is often presented much more informally than a normal web page would be. And again, this can make the content more relatable and maybe increase engagement with your target audience. However, if you're not careful, a long blog or vlog may be off-putting. Because it's quite personal, people can tend to ramble and it gets quite long and boring and people get put off. A normal website is usually quite concise, but a blog and a vlog can not be concise. They can be too long. And also, for some bits of information, actually having a vlog or blog is not the most professional way of doing things right. I was thinking of like YouTube thumbnails are usually not massively professional. You can't imagine a company presenting something really official or important via a vlog, say. So there's a time and a place for vlogs and blogs, usually where it's fairly informal and fairly relaxed. Something really official and important is probably not appropriate to be presented via a blog or vlog. The last thing to discuss today is mobile applications or apps. So these are programs designed to run on devices like phones and tablets and smartwatches and so on. So mobile devices. And many websites are also converted into apps. I have underlined also because I think a lot of people assume that if you have a website, you automatically have an app as well, because most websites have apps too. But of course, they're separate, right? A website is stored in one place and an app is stored in another place. Just because they are similar does not mean they are the same, right? So Facebook has got a website, but also has got an application. They're both written by potentially different people, but just owned by the same company. And they're obviously very similar in the way they work. And the reason why apps are made is often done to optimize for mobile. So for example, Facebook, right? Awful quality image here, but this is a Facebook app on an iPhone, it looks like. You can log in in this app via the fingerprint scanner, which most computers don't have a fingerprint scanner. So the website, which is going to be accessed mostly by computers, like laptops and desktops, will not need a login with a fingerprint scanner. But most phones nowadays have fingerprint scanners. And so you can optimize, you can design specifically for mobile in by including a fingerprint scanner. A key difference between websites and apps is that apps usually focus on one function, whereas a website usually has many different pages on different topics. So they're all related to say Facebook, but each page might have a different theme to it. Whereas an app often is just on one theme. So Facebook here, they've got one main website, but loads of different apps, which all do a slightly different thing um, individually. Now that's quite good if you don't want all of the functionality, just choose one or choose two. But the downside is it's gonna cost you a lot of money to create each app individually and also maintain the applications. Making an app is quite challenging, arguably harder than making a website. So that cost can be quite a lot, even if the optimization and streamlined focus are advantages.